The Jets were able to beat the Giants in overtime after a Greg Zerline 33-yard game-winning field goal. However, there's a little bit of an asterisk on this game I'm going to call right now because Tyrod Taylor got hurt. And so you throw in Dan, I was a Danny DeVito, Tommy DeVito. Who, Danny DeVito who was went in 0-4 there. In, in the first four quarters of the game. He didn't complete a single pass. And by the way, I'll say this. Total passing yards in this game, negative nine for the Giants. Nice. Negative nine total yards. So I don't know. <coughs> Based on the circumstances, they did get a win, but should the Jets feel good about this win? Well, I think the game was basically watching people punt the whole game, right? There was uh, uh, Each team punted like 10 or 12 times, I think. It was amazing, the number of punts in that game. Yeah, I mean, that was an ugly game. Totally ugly. <laughs> and uh, I think the Jets are happy. They got to feel happy they won, right? Every A win is a win, no matter that what the how ugly it is or what the score is. If you win, you win. So they got to be happy about that. And the, they, they obviously thought they were going to lose, right? I, I think the coaching was uh, uh, Brian Dable's got to be kicking himself, right, in this game. He went for that field goal. And uh, it was he was deep in in the Jets territory, and uh, he he could have just run the ball there. At the time there was less. How many seconds were there? There was uh, less than a minute. Yeah, I think it was 40, like 40, 40, 30, 40 seconds left. And even if you ran it, missed it, right? Then the Jets have still got to make a bunch of plays to get down the field. So, uh, and they could have taken, you know, I just think he, that was a mistake. He shouldn't have tried to kick the field goal. I think they would have won the game if he hadn't done that. Then they missed the field goal. Yeah. And that, I guess, you know, you look at uh, Gano, he's been a pretty good kicker. And you say, oh, no. Uh, yeah. that, I think that's right. Graham, oh, uh, no. Uh, I think that that's exactly right. That's the game. He came in and missed that field goal. And that uh, gave the Jets new life. And they managed to get down the field and i thought that uh, uh that uh, wilson made a huge mistake when he threw the ball to the player in the middle of the field with less than what there was about 10 seconds left at that point yeah. right and they raced down there and got the ball snapped and and uh and killed the time there with one second to go uh, he got lucky there yeah. really lucky and uh then they kicked the field goal and then uh, you know they uh, managed to get another one and that was the game so and overtime so I'm going to sound probably like a Giants fan for the next X amount of minutes because I'm going to say this. The Jets should not feel good about this game whatsoever. I understand they won, but you're telling me the Jets were one good coaching decision away. And Sorry, so the, the, the Giants were one good coaching decision away. For beating the Jets with a quarterback that didn't complete a single pass. It was like, what was it, fourth and one? Fourth and one. Fourth and one. Fourth okay. And one. Give the ball to Saquon Barkley. Huh? And, and, and here's and the thing. You get one yard. And, 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 and here, here's where, you know, I guess it's revisionist history. If you do, if everything on, the jet, on that Jets' last possession still happened, if you run the ball, more than a second gets taken off the clock. So they wouldn't have time to snap it, time to spike it, time for the Greg Zerline tying field goal, and then sending the game into overtime. A single second was left on that clock. Even if you don't get it, you go down trying. You don't give it to your kicker, who already missed a field goal in this game, in horrible rainy weather, in the marshlands, to then try to basically try to seal the game. Try to put your team up by three and have Zach Wilson do basically the impossible. Instead, you decide to kick that field goal. Your court, by the way, you didn't think of this when Daniel Jones was injured to maybe bring in. I know they looked. We talked about it. They were looking at Matt Barkley and Ian Book and didn't sign any of those guys. So you were leaving it up to Tyrod Taylor, who, who was. I'm not going to say he was playing good. He was playing efficient. There's the, there's the difference. Efficient and good. Jimmy G with the 49ers wasn't all that great, but he was efficient. Brock Purdy, we've seen recently, isn't, you know, by the way, spoilers for Friday, by the way, Friday, big show. He's not going to be in my top 10 list because what we've seen when it matters is he hasn't been efficient when it matters. He, he, Brock Purdy's not a great quarterback, but he works. He's efficient. Danny, uh, I, once again, Danny DeVito again, 
Screw with my head. Tommy DeVito was 0-4. In the game, he ended 2-7. and I think he actually played more like Danny DeVito would. Yeah. yeah. They didn't have any confidence in him throwing the football. Saquon Barkley ran it 36 times for 128 yards, no touchdowns. They didn't trust him to throw the football. Well. And uh, when he did, he was 0 for 4. Yeah. The Jets should not feel good. Your defense played your defense played very, very well. Both defenses played out of their minds. Zach Wilson couldn't complete many passes. The offense couldn't get going for either side. And there were a total, I have the number here. We, we You mentioned it. There's a total of 24 punts in this game. 13 from the Giants, 11 from the Jets. Over 1,000 yards were, were, were gained based on punts. Over 1,000 yards of punting distance, which is ridiculous. Really? That much? 1,000? 549 yards off 13 punts for the Giants. 529 yards off 11 punts for the Jets. It's ridiculous. So you don't go to a football game to watch them punt all the time. Yeah, it's especially uh, because I wouldn't want to ask for my money back. Once every four I years. I want a refund of my ticket if I go l- watch that. So I'm saying this right now. The Jets, yes, while you won the game, and yes, while a win is a win is a win. Morally, this is a moral loss because you almost lost to a team with a quarterback that didn't complete a single pass. Now the Bills, was it two years ago? They lost to Mac Jones attempting three passes and only completing two. But at least he completed a pass. We saw uh, Tommy DeVito go 0 for 4. He didn't throw the ball. He couldn't complete a pass. Brian Dable didn't trust Tommy DeVito to throw it. And when he did in that overtime, he had what? He had three attempts, two completions for negative one yards. He also got sacked twice. So me personally, yes, while the Jets did win this game, congratulations to the Jets. I'm saying this is a moral loss because you were literally one good coaching decision away from losing to a quarterback and to a team that A, isn't good, period. You're on a winning streak, but the Giants are not a very good team. And their starting quarterback got hurt, or I guess back starting backup quarterback is Daniel Jones out. Tyrod Taylor gets hurt. They send in a quarterback. I believe he's on. Un, uh, he's undrafted. He doesn't complete a single pass. I don't know where. Where did they get this Debito guy? Where did he come from? He was. Uh, he was undrafted uh, from Illinois. Okay, he's a rookie this year. Well, they should have known better than to have him as the backup for Tyrod Taylor because Tyrod Taylor has a history of getting hurt a lot too. Yeah. So they should have had somebody a little better. Than DeVito back there to back up Tyrod Taylor, and they probably would have won the game pretty easily if they had someone even, you know, as you say, there's a few quarterbacks out there. Barkley, he he probably could have. And made. they brought him in. They Ian, probably they could. also brought in Ian Book uh, from the Saints. Oh yeah, they brought in a couple quarterbacks and decided not to sign them, which you know shocks me that you decide to do that and said you want to go with an undrafted rookie in Tommy DeVito, and then yeah, you you have so much faith in him, you allow him to temp to attempt four passes in in, in, in the, the main four quarters in regulation. Well, even with that, they could have won the game if they just tried to run the ball there at the fourth down. And they made a mistake. Didn't they get a penalty? Yeah, uh, Kayvon Thibodeau that? had an offside. Yeah, an offside. How, how can you do that? I think it was a, How can you have an I'm offside? I'm pretty sure it was a third down. That would have ended the game, too. I, I could be wrong, but I think it was a third <coughs> down that led to a first or something like that. It, yeah. it, it, was, it was a crucial penalty. That was a that, crucial penalty, that, that they too. Could not, they could yeah. not give up. And you know what? They did. And then Kayvon Thibodeau said that he wasn't offsides. His hand crosses the, the neutral zone. It's offside before the ball is snapped. It was offside. So it was just, it was just bad playing for, uh, for the Giants. And I don't know. Daniel Jones... I think it, I think it was announced he will be starting this weekend. He was cleared for contact, so my guess is he'll be in there. The Giants this weekend uh, are going to go up against the Las Vegas Raiders. Jimmy G, we're not talking about that game today, but oh Lord above, Devontae Adams was uh, I think pissed off is not even the word that he was. He was extremely. Oh, he didn't frustrated. play well. I mean, he's pissed off at who? Is Jimmy he pissed G. off? He's pissed off. He should be pissed off at himself. Why? They threw passes to him, and he bobbled the ball. There, okay. for, could have been a first down, there, and he there, missed. There, he missed up on the, on the on the on uh, the pass there. Uh, I mean, he there was one bad drop. He didn't play that well either. It was not all on Jimmy G. It's I'll, I'll, I'll say on him too. There was one bad drop, and then late in the game, I'm not on the two yard line. There, there was a free rusher. Jimmy G was going to get annihilated, which he did. I'm not going to put a lot of blame on that. But on, on there was another one where he had like ten yards of separation, something like that. Uh, I think they were. Oh yeah, I saw that one. And just that a bad. One, that was that bad. That one was horrible. 
That was horrible. You know, you know what that reminded me of? That reminded me of the 2019 Super Bowl against the Chiefs. Up by, I think they were up by 10. Emmanuel Sanders has a few yards of separation. He was, I think, he, he wasn't wide open, but he was open. He out, he overthrows him by like three, four yards. That, that that's what that pass reminded me of. Jimmy G was off that game, yeah. but he, I mean, yeah, he, he didn't play well. I looked at the number. He got pressured on nearly two thirds of his dropbacks. Sixty yeah. percent pressure rate. So. The uh, Lions defense did a number on that 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 pretty poor Las Vegas. Uh, Las and the Vegas Lions Raiders offense defense. looked pretty good too, huh? Four hundred eighty-six yards. Hey, huh? Jared Goff was cooking. Uh, Jameer, or was it? Uh, yeah, Jameer Gibbs, Gibbs was that cooking. That guy, that running. guy's a rookie of the year in my mind. The way he played last night. Ah, uh, I, I would say he's definitely. He's, he's got to be a candidate. Definitely yeah. up there. Hi, everybody! Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right-hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.